Now by Happy Gambule, he's a senior political advisor at Greenpeace Africa. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News. First, a reaction to the passing of Minister Edna Mulewa. I mean, it took us all by shock. I think a lot of people are still coming to terms with the fact that she passed away. We do know that she was suffering from an illness, not particularly sure what it was, but it was a short illness that uh, we've known about. However, um, we would like to send our condolences to her family as well as the colleagues at the Department of Environmental Affairs and all South Africans who are impacted by this. Okay, what was her stance um, towards climate change and how will her passing away affect climate change discussions and policy in South Africa and abroad? That's a very deep question. I think um, with, with her legacy in the climate change negotiations and broadly in environmental affairs, um, she has made sure that action is taken, at least programmatic action, but action is taken nonetheless. She's always made sure that the ambition of developing countries is, is at least a, a is recognized so every time in developing countries versus developed countries are doing some kind of action it must be recognized as also contributing to addressing climate change or any other issue that is a global threat around the environment and i think moving ahead into the into the next talks in poland around climate change i think her name and the legacy she has left will somehow galvanize people to move ahead and make sure that the decisions that are come that come out reflect what we need in the world right now it's World Rhino Day today. Do you think that South Africans generally are engaged and aware of what's happening with our environmental issues and specifically the rhino issue? Well, uh, it's a bit of a tough one because uh, with South Africa we've got so many problems. And I think with it being World Rhino Day, it's a good moment to just shine light and to give uh, a lot of uh, uh, education and awareness around the plight of rhinos. The fact that um, the stats are going down and the fact that rhinos in South Africa are becoming, uh, well, are also in the SADC region are becoming safer is a, good, is a good step. But the fact is that we need to understand that there's more to this. It's not just people poaching. It's about the environment in which the rhinos are in. It's also about how people are contributing to all the other facets such as how the, the poachers are getting into the parks, how they're getting out and all the other associated resources that support them. But also in terms of just being in the general public, I think we need to understand that all these alive things, all these animals, they play a role in our ecosystem. We are not in isolation. As human beings, we are part and parcel of the greater environment. And that's also part of some of the lessons that she was able to instill in, in, in spite of all the things that have happened in the world is that we are part and parcel of the greater environment. And in order to live a better life and a good life, we need the environment to be clean and safe. I think that's a very good point when it comes to understanding that issue because like you've said there are many problems that South Africans face and a retort especially when it comes to these issues of rhino poaching is people saying I don't have a job mm -hmm. I'm not I don't have money why should I care about a rhino but at the end of the day if our environment is not working properly and our environment is not in a good space we are therefore not in a good space yes. talk to us about the work that Greenpeace does any educational uh, drives that you do besides on days like this well Greenpeace does a number of of, um, initiatives we've got a number of projects around Africa so we in five African countries we in South Africa we in Kenya we in the DRC Senegal Cameroon as well as uh, forgot the other one actually the all five um, but what what we do is we work on climate change we work on environmental issues so likewise issues that involve the greater social and uh, the social and environmental links so it's not just about conservation it's not just about saving a particular thing it's about how it also relates to our social lives to our cultural as well as our traditional way of living it's also about whether or not there are the economic benefits in order for us to be able to live sustainably because we cannot act like you can just you can just conserve for the sake of conserving it's about conserving sustainably and making sure that that can also live on for future generations let's go back to the issue that you spoke about you said poachers the way they get inside the parks the way they get outside the parks it's also um, 
it can be connected to South Africa's issue of crime as well. Poaching is a crime and feeds into international crime as well. We're speaking earlier on to someone who was talking about Asia and the demand there and that how, how that feeds crime here. How closely do you think that the Environmental Affairs Department, uh, groups like yourself and government need to, and private sector as well, sorry, need mm. to work together to eradicate these kind of issues? Well, there's, there's always the, the saying that policy, our policies are always good in South Africa, um, but implementation is bad. Um, but the notion that we're starting to work from, at least as a greater civil society network, is that if policy is good, implementation is good. So we need to go back to that thing that is informing us on how we are acting. And I think in terms of how we work in synergies between government and, and, and private sector is to make sure that the loopholes that exist for the, for the trans transporting, the trafficking, as well as the ability to enter into protected areas and shipping of goods, and so, and, and goods as well as the resources that help the shipping of those goods um, is controlled much better. Because what we need to be able to do is to see and to be able to account. And if we cannot see and account for these things, then it's easy for things to just ship away and to be taken away and for rhinos to just be murdered in this case. Thanks so much for your time. That was Senior Political Advisor at Greenpeace Africa. Happy Kambule. Send us your comments to hashtag full view. You can view any of our interviews and features by going to sabcnews.com. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter. And of course, we look forward to any WhatsApp voice notes or videos of about 30 seconds. Our number is 066-479-8056.